Hi, Aaron Estrada here. This week, we're going to cover techniques for getting the best possible results when pulling mats from green screen and blue screen material. Best practice when pulling mats is to pull at least two mats. One, the soft mat, is the one that captures all this detail like these flyaway hairs, the defocused areas in Everman's jumpsuit here, etc. The second mat is a mat to make sure that the core of the mat, the first mat, is solid. And that's typically called the core mat. Sometimes we'll also need to create a mat for the outside, which will cut off any additional junk that's outside, and that's called the out mat. So let's jump right into it. You can use pretty much any gear you like to do either mat, but uh, I don't know, I have personal preferences. I like to use key light or IBK for my beauty mats, and then prime mat for my core mats and other junk mats. It's not to say that prime mat's not good at creating mats. It can make beauty mats as well, but I find it very quick for making hard mats. So let's, uh, let's use IBK. IBK comes in two parts, the IBK color and the IBK gizmo. IBK color's job is to create an artificial clean plate. So you'll notice this plate of Everman here is a little unevenly lit. And this is especially problematic in areas like around the hair or these areas here where we, where the uneven lighting intersects his edge. We still need to pull a mat for those areas. And if we were to try to create mat settings, even in our soft mat that would create a nice mat here, we'll probably end up losing a little bit of quality because we'll have to push the mat a little bit harder. If we can level the plate out, we'll get a better result. So IBK is great for this. To use it, you pick the color of the screen that you're working on, in this case, green. And we're gonna view IBK color here. And you can see it started to generate this uh, artificial clean plate for us. By adjusting the size and the erode and patch black, we can fill in the areas here and create an artificial clean plate. Now, uh, because we're going to be using a core mat, getting the core perfect isn't as important as getting the edges perfect, which is I, why I like to tune the IBK color node while I'm actually looking at the IBK gizmo, which is the actual keyer. Now to use it, you connect this foreground to the foreground you like to key, and you connect the color, the C input, to the IBK color, which is generating that artificial clean plate for you. You have to make sure you pick color green if it's a green screen. You can also pick the color directly if you like, if you don't want to use IBK color, but why wouldn't you want to use it? It works great. So now I'm going to view this mat from IBK Gizmo. Before I adjust any of the IBK Gizmo's controls, I'm going to finish tweaking IBK color to make sure I'm getting the maximum quality results that I can. I, like I said, I'm not so worried about the core. I'm more worried about this edge here. So I'm going to adjust IBK color to not be overzealous in my adjusting or patching up of that artificial green screen. So there we go. I'm backing off just a bit on it and you'll see the core is not patching in as well as it could. But to be honest, it almost doesn't matter because we're going to fill that in with another keyer anyway. So let's just be as gentle as we can with this to make sure that we capture as much transparency on that edge as possible. There we go. I think we're almost there. Yeah, let's call that, let's call that down. I'm gonna skip through here real quick just to make sure everything is okay. Yeah. This will work. Now let's build a core mat. To do that, I'm going to use Primat. I'm going to create a little manifold here using dots to sort of feed all of my setups here. I'm going to drop down a Primat. I'll connect that to the foreground. Now I'm viewing the RGB, and I'll just let Primat guess the color of the screen by using auto compute here. Let's see how that works. Yeah, it seems to do a pretty good job. Now I'm going to look at the alpha channel while I clean up 
the background. I'll start with clean BG noise first and then click on all these other areas of the screen to create a totally solid mat because remember the quality of this hard mat or core mat isn't as important as the density because we're mostly trying to capture trying to get a solid mat not a pretty mat so I cleaned up the background and now I'm going to clean up the foreground by color picking in here with clean foreground noise while I hold down control or control shift to lasso so I'm clicking control control shift there we go that's pretty solid I'm gonna gamma slam down to make sure there's no holes so I have a little bit of a hole there so I'll fill that in and his ear here so this one I'm just being as greedy as possible I don't care about the quality there we go good solid mat Oh, there's another spot I missed so now we need to combine these two mats together the easiest way to do that is using the a max node now I'm going to show you a really quick trick you can do in Primat also it's got the ability to create a G mat built right in if you drag in this box this crop box it will completely disregard everything outside there and hence create a nice quick G mat for you so now I have in the case of Everman here he doesn't move very much Let's just double check that he never moves out of the box we can pretty much crop crop all that extra crud off of this just using the built-in stuff in Primat so that's that was lucky for us right there and to combine these two I'm going to use a max I'm going to max the Primat core mat or hard mat with my IBK Gizmo soft mat. So we can see that this is my hard mat. It's actually getting a little clumpy up in his hair. We may have to touch that up a bit. So let's max them together and see what we need to do. Max. Now that I have them maxed together, I'm going to put the IBK Gizmo on the one view of viewer one and I'm gonna put the max on two and I'm gonna to toggle back and forth to see what I'm getting and I'm gonna gamma slam this down a bit to see what I'm getting and it seems to me that my hard mat is unfortunately actually causing my soft mat to grow a bit which is definitely not something we want that'll cause things to get a little bit more clumpy in areas like these details in his hair and maybe some of these edge areas that are a little more transparent so we have to shrink this core mat just a little bit and the easiest way to do that is within a road now normally our roads are pretty destructive but because we have a nice detail mat for the outside or a nice soft mat I should say for the detail we don't have to worry about damaging the quality of this core mat so we can be really rough with it so I'll drop in a road uh, filter down, let's say. And rather than using box, we'll use uh, triangle or quadratic, something that has a slightly softer effect. Gaussian, let's say. Shrink it in just a bit. And I'm going to gamma slam it again to see where we're at. OK, see, at this point, we have to just drop this in to a comp and see where we're at because if you'll see we're definitely shrinking it but we can't really see what we're gonna get until we start to use this mat in the final result so for now we're just gonna pencils down on this and move on to the composite so rather than use the built-in spill suppression in either the Primat or the IBK Gizmo hmm, seems like IBK Gizmo is doing a pretty good screen suppression we might consider using that. Let's use the spill suppression for now in the IBK gizmo. Now, because we maxed together everything here, we're also maxing the spill suppression from the Primat in with this. So let's make sure that we only max the alpha channel. So I'm going to the max node, and you'll notice that the Primat is on A and that the IBK gizmo is on B. So if I disable the RGB channels of A, now I'm only maxing together these channels, 
the alpha channels from A with the RGB channels from B, which is the IBK gizmo. We may need to touch up our screen suppression strategy a little bit some other way, but uh, this will be a good start just to very quickly get it over the background. So let's do a add mix and add mix right here. Tab add mix, drop that down and we'll inspect the result and see where we're at. Now you notice my core mat is still growing out a little too much and it's not looking so awesome. So we have to maybe erode that a little bit more. And unfortunately this filter erode, not working great, not with Gaussian. Let's see how it works with a slightly more rough erode. And I'm going to give it a little bit of blur manually here underneath there. Blurring just the alpha. And we'll erode it a little bit less. There we go. Now, unfortunately, I'm losing some of the detail here. So this is a situation where I'm going to go back and attempt to adjust my hard mat a little bit more. And this is another one of the reasons why I like Primat because it's possible to do this. So I'm going, I've disabled all my adjustments to my core mat and I'm going back up to my Primat and we're gonna attempt to adjust the result of the hard mat. So going back into the Primat controls here and I'm going to tr try to just let this get more transparent. So for that, I'm going to say matte minus, which will cause the color picker to subtract these things from the matte. Just very carefully click in these transparent areas to make them more transparent and make my core matte a little less greedy. Let's make sure we haven't opened up any holes in it while we're doing this. And it looks like we have. So with Primat, usually the easiest way to get out of trouble is to just undo your way back. So I'm going to keep hitting Control-Z to back up from some of these color picks that I did. There we go. And then we'll go to Matte Plus to add these. Hopefully we can get these areas of skin. So I'm Control-clicking here. Hopefully we get those without getting the hair with any luck. Looks like we did get the skin back in. And I'm going to go matte minus and pull a little bit more. Try to pull a little bit more of this hair out without bringing that skin back. Oops, went too far again. So Z to back up, control Z. Control Z a little bit more, Z, Z. There we go. And then we'll mat plus to bring that back in. And again, normally Primat will start to get very crunchy if you're not careful and you really push it hard like this. But again, remember that we're using this as our core mat. So it's not the end of the world if we create a hard-ish mat for this. Okay, now let's look at it at our max. I'm going to disable the color pickers in Primat so I don't inadvertently edit them. And we'll inspect our core mat. I'm looking at IBK Gizmo, 1, and then after my max on 2. So now we're getting into a zone where I can adjust my core mat probably without messing up the quality of this final result. So to adjust my core mat now, I'm going to take a totally different strategy. I'm going to disable this blur and erode. And I'm actually just going to do a color lookup to make that mat even more crunchy. And I'll adjust this color lookup to only do the alpha. And I'll use the master curve to make this mat even more hard and crunchy. Because don't forget, all of my detail is in my soft mat from IBK. Here we go. So now we'll look at our max again. Put this on one, put this on two. There, I think 
that may do the trick. We may have to erode this a little bit. There we go. I think we're on track. Let's look at the admix, our final composite, and we're still getting some little blobbies in his hair. Disable our road. Just our look up. Yep, we're gonna need this road. I'm gonna drop down a little bit of a blur after that even. Blur alpha. There we go. Now I'm gonna There we go. That'll do for now. We're going to pull in another mat probably to touch up some of this hair detail in an, in another video. But so far, it's not looking so bad. So the next steps are to get the last bits of detail that we can pull through the hair. And we're also going to create a flip book to make sure this stuff is stable after we, after we get that hair detail in in the next video.